thanking you for all the blessings you bestow upon us. We ask for continued blessings for our citizens in our city. Lord, we ask for comfort for those persons who have had unexpected occurrences in their lives that caused quite a bit of discomfort. We ask you to touch those families who have absolutely nothing and give them relief. These are all the blessings we ask in our name. Amen. 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 Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Thank you. The clerk will please call the roll. Whoa. Yeah, call the roll. Oh. That's right. Okay. Oh. Whoa. Excuse me. <laughs> Ms. Johnson? Here. Mr. Protogiro? Here. Mr. Riddick? Here. Mr. Smeagle? Here. Dr. Webley? Here. Ms. Williams? Here. Mr. Wynn? Here. Mr. Frame? Here. Oh, the motion is to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting, please. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protogiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? I, the clerk will please read the resolution for the closed meeting. A resolution certifying a closed meeting of the Council of the City of Norfolk held in accordance with the provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act. Adopt the resolution. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protogiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Norfolk City Council Chambers. Thank you for joining us this evening. For those of you who do not regularly attend, attend our council meetings, what we will do tonight is we have one ceremonial matter, which is important to us, and th after that we'll move to something called a, the, an invitation to bid, and the City Council will receive a bid tonight. And then we'll move to our public hearings, there are only three of them on tonight's agenda, and then we'll move to the consent agenda, and we have seven, eight, nine, ten matters there, something like that. Uh, we'll vote on all of these matters in just the way that they are numbered on the printed docket. If any member of the public would like to address the City Council on a non-agenda item, you'll be given that opportunity uh, at the end of the formal agenda. But in order to have your name called, you must have first signed a slip of paper, which the clerk has made available, uh, had made available in the lobby uh, behind the council chambers before the meeting began, and several of you have elected to do that. So before we move on to the formal part of the, of the meeting, we will, first of all, um, we have one ceremonial uh, matter here, and I can you can see him from here. The Ruffner uh, champions here is Coach Feynman. Coach, you want to come on up? Coach, congratulations, yes, sir. Right there, would be great. I've got a resolution here for you, and we're thank you for bringing the Ruffner Academy Bulldogs down, uh, so we can present present them with the resolution. Resolution uh, reads: Whereas in the fiscal year 2007 operating budget, the City Council provided funding that enabled Norfolk Public Schools to begin a middle school football program that has proved, proven to be highly successful. Whereas the Ruffner Academy Bulldogs football team is comprised of 6th, 7th, and 8th graders and has established, established itself as one of Norfolk's leading middle school football teams. And whereas under the leadership of coach, head coach Bobby Feynman, the Bulldogs finished this year's season with a 6-2 and two record and on November the 5th, capture the 2014 Norfolk Portsmouth Middle School League Football Championship by defeating the Lake Taylor Middle School Vikings by a score of 14 to 12. Whereas Coach Feynman's team proved themselves to be resilient athletes who, in winning this championship, overcame a variety of adversities in learning the value of teamwork and sacrifice and the success that comes from working together to achieve a goal. So now, therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the City of Norfolk hereby congratulates the Ruffner Academy Bulldogs middle school football team on the occasion of winning the Norfolk Portsmouth Middle School League Football Championship and commends Coach Feynman and his assistants for their commitment to helping young people develop life skills through athletic competition and that this resolution be recorded in the permanent proceedings of the City Council and that a copy thereof be presented to Coach Feynman and his team. You want to call the roll there? Yes, sir. Adopt the resolution, Ms. Johnson. I proudly say yes. Mr. Protogiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Absolutely. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Coach, let me give this to you. and Thank you. That's a unanimous vote again down here. <laughs> the rough it was an event. <laughs> Sure, we, we would love to hear from you. Uh, so I don't have to say Bobby Feynman 20 Oh, you don't have to. You know. <laughs> no, okay. um, wow. Mayor Frame, 
Vice Mayor Williams, esteemed members of City Council. On behalf of my principal, Rick Fraley, and Assistant Principal Doris Langhorn, I want to thank all of y'all for inviting the Ruffner Academy football team here tonight to celebrate and recognize these fine young men behind me as champions of the Norfolk Portsmouth Middle School Football League. It is truly an honor and a privilege to be here. Um, Vice Mayor Williams, Ms. Johnson, Mr. Riddick also wanted to thank you all for your ongoing interest and support throughout the season. Uh, these fine young men behind me came together in late August and made it very clear to me and my staff that their only goal was nothing short of winning a championship. They accomplished their goal because they realized from the beginning that talent alone does not guarantee success. Football is a special game, and above all else, it teaches and instills in us many of the most important values for success in life. Two of those values in particular were the cornerstone of our success. Our team motto is family, and we used it as an acronym that stands for Forget About Me, I Love You. The kids bought into this and realized that they needed to play for each other and put the team's success ahead of their own individual success. To a man, they accepted their role on the team and fought for each other. The other key to our success was one simple word. It starts with an A, and I'll let them tell you. Adversity. <laughs> adversity. We spend every day talking about adversity, understanding it, dealing with it, and overcoming it. Unfortunately, we had our share of distractions and adversity throughout the season. We started the season with 34 young men and finished with only 22. We lost our way a little in the middle of the season and lost two games that we did not handle very well. To their credit, they realized their mistakes, refocused and recommitted themselves, and overcame tremendous adversity in the last three games uh, to win a championship. I'm very proud of them and their accomplishments on the field. It was a remarkable season full of joy, pride, and satisfaction. But for me, the greatest satisfaction is knowing that these fine young men clearly understand the importance of such values as teamwork, selflessness, sacrifice, and overcoming adversity. It will serve them well throughout their lives. Thank you all again for having us, and I want to wish all of you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And before we leave, we do have some parting gifts. Okay. Can I say something? Sure. Hey, Coach, uh, before um, yep. you do anything, by the way, we have certificates for each, each member of the team and staff as well. Thank you. All right. And um, I think we've got a couple of council members who would like to say a few words too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, before we take pictures, uh, I'd, I'd like to say that this year I really see the real value in the middle school football program. Uh, I attended the championship game uh, with Lake Taylor and, uh, and Ruffner. And I also attended practices uh, at Ruffner. And these young men really exhibit good sportsmanship. They were attentive, no horse playing, you know, I mean, nothing like that at all. And, um, you know, I really see, uh, and even at the championship game, uh, the a lot of students were in attendance, and they were, you know, very disciplined. And so I really see the value in, in middle school football. And, uh, and and these guys, if for those of you who haven't seen them, they have a tunnel that they come out of with the smoke, you know, and everything, you know. And when Bobby came down um, one night for, for an agenda item, and he had just come from the Ruffner, you know, practice, you know, I had no idea what he has put into it. And, uh, and I really appreciate you, Bobby, for uh, taking your time, your talent, your resources, you know, with these young men. And young men, I'm extremely proud of you. I'm extreme, extremely proud of you uh, that I saw you in practice and, and your championship game. And so I just think we all have a lot to be proud of as far as these young you know, men are Great. concerned. Thank you very good, much. Good for you, Great. And I just want to say that um, four or five of the team members of your team members are my former students mm. so it is my honor to see you here tonight I told you you could do it since you were in pre-k <laughs> and now you are in middle school and you're on your way to to high school and always remember as I told you when I was your teacher we are always a family you can always come home so thank you thank you great okay can I 
Um, I just want to let the, the student athletes know that your coach really cares about you. There are some days that I wish Bobby Feynman did not have my phone number <laughs> because he yes. calls me and he does not stop calling me until he gets me. But um, he really does care about you and, and he never, <laughs> rarely does he call me for himself. It's just what can I do for my football team? How can I help these young men become um, better students, better athletes? How can I give them another um, opportunity? How can I improve their level of exposure? And the thing that I want to leave you with is that middle school is just that you have high school left to go and you still have college and the rest of your lives. And the things that you learn here in middle school are things that I want you to remember. I want you to focus on your grades. The word is student athlete, meaning that your studies are just as important as your athletic ability. And athletes get hurt. You guys see it all the time. But if you have studied and you have uh, mastered the art of an education, then there's nothing that will stop you, not an injury, not uh, being hurt on the football field. You will be able to get up and walk off the field and walk into real life and still be successful and still be um, good citizens uh, wherever you are. So I'm very proud of you. It's very good to see all of the young men that your coach has been calling me about for the last six or seven months. <laughs> My phone will take a break and it'll start up again in August, but um, congratulations to you and don't stop doing the good things that you're doing. Yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> got time for pictures, let them come up. Has anybody got a camera? I mean, the, the council would like a picture Lori's with the team. Oh, Lori's Who's got a? And Lori's Lori. Can we get Lori? Can y'all? Hey, uh, there it is. Okay. Go ahead and deliver your. No. No. Everybody has a camera now. No, everybody. All phones. Okay. Hey. Great. Right. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Wow. This is exciting. There you go. Thank you. Wow. Thank you very much. What's your name? That has our championship logo on the front. Oh, my God. Thank Mayor Frame, you don't have a ward, so I couldn't put a number on the back of yours. And Everybody else, I hope that I got the right ward number. Did we mess yours up, Councilman Smeagol? It's supposed to be a five, isn't it? All right, I'll get that changed. In front of us down here. That's so cool. Sure. Well, you wouldn't want it anyway. All right, everybody pull in here. Tighten up. Tighten up. Bobby, it's okay because I'm really number one, so it doesn't matter. I'm number one. All right, Mamie, get in here. Thank you. Okay. I'm too short. Right. I, I Even standing in that low, they're taller than the side. We'll get on, <laughs> get on my tip. That's these kids. Terry. Poor Terry. <laughs> I was going to say, don't even talk to me about shorts. <laughs> Vertically challenged. That's right. All right. Smile. One, or look tough. One, two, three. Nice. Great. Thank you. You guys are very serious. All right. Thank you all, Thank guys. You. Way to go. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. So, great. Coach, you can take it. They don't need to sit down. You guys, I know you got more fun things. We dismissed. Uh, you can, no, you can just believe me. You're dismissed. Let me say that. Yay. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Okay. And thanks again. Bobby, thank you. We like gifts. Calendars. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. We are afraid. Yeah. I'm not sure. He did a good job with these guys this year. Yeah. He really did. Did they play in all that rain that night? Give me. Yeah. Really? Okay. That was pretty cool. Yeah. You know, that, that old deal was they were supposed to make. We gave it to him for a buck. Well, obviously the sweatshirt. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll call the meeting back to order. And the first matter is the IB number one invitation to bid. Yes, sir. This item was um, continued from your November 25 meeting and is uh, for action on the ordinance that uh, accompanied the, the bid submitted by Golf Management. Okay. Are we ready to vote? Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I have an ordinance accepting the bid submitted by Golf Management Inc. for a lease and service agreement with a term of 20 years for the lease and operation of Lambert's Point Golf Course and Ocean View Golf Course in the City of Norfolk. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. William? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Thank you. Public hearing one, please. Public hearing one scheduled for this day under state law on the application of Grace Bible Church for a change of zoning to remove conditions on property zone conditional IN1 institutional premises numbered 1121 East Little Creek Road and by 7 0 vote planning commission recommends approval. And um, Mark King and Neil McCullough are here to answer questions if we have any. Okay. Okay, I have an ordinance to rezone properties located at 1121 and 1129 East Little Creek Road to remove conditions on property zone conditional I and one. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. William? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing two. Public hearing two is scheduled for this day under state law on the application of Norfolk Redevelopment and Housing Authority for the closing, vacating, and discontinuing of 11 portions of East Ocean View Avenue, 22nd Bay Street, 23rd Bay, Old 23rd Bay and Pleasant Avenue. And by 7 0 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. All right, call the roll, please. I have an ordinance closing, vacating, and discontinuing 11 portions of East Ocean View Avenue, 22nd, 23rd, and Old 23rd Bay Streets and Pleasant Avenue, and authorizing the conveyance to the abutting property owner of any interest the city may have in the underlying fee of said portions uh, of these streets contingent upon the satisfaction of certain conditions. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. William? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing three. Public hearing three scheduled for this day under state law on the application of Norfolk Redevelopment and Housing Authority to amend the city's general plan so as to change the land use designation for properties located at 3321 Kimball Terrace from open space recreation to multifamily change the zoning from conditional R13 and open space preservation to conditional R11 on property located at 3321 Kimball Terrace to change the zoning from conditional R13 to conditional R11 for properties located at 3101 to 3163 Kimball Terrace to change the zoning from R11 to conditional R11 for properties located at 600 to 614, 601 to 617, and 618 to 776 Wiley Drive to change the zoning from R11 to OSP district on property located at 3101 to 3163 Kimball Terrace and for a special exception to permit the construction of seven or more dwelling units on properties located at 3101 to 3357 Kimball Terrace, 600 to 614 Wiley Drive and 601 to 741 Wiley Drive. And by 7-0 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. Okay, any questions? Call the roll, please. I have um, six ordinances for this item, Mr. President, and uh, the first is an ordinance to amend the city's general plan to change the land use designation for properties located at 3321 Kimball Terrace from open space recreational to multifamily. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Uh, I'm going to support, uh, you know, all of these, but I recognize and I hope that the members of the Redevelopment Housing Authority Board recognizes that. Uh, in some instances, this is an effort to change the demographics. With this property being two blocks of light rail and um, and, and uh, the fact that uh, an individual could live in these units, uh, they're going to be fabulous. And <clears throat> it's um, it, it just worries me that this is just not an effort of uh, gentrification. But uh, I have confidence, I hope, in the members of the board of the uh, Revive and Housing Authority that they will be m mindful of this and, and make sure that it doesn't happen. Uh, I told Cheryl Montgomery when they built that uh, facility, it's supposed to be a learning center, that I hope they didn't try to turn that into a country club for people who are uh, going to move into that community. And we just need to recognize that, that you know, there is a very, very fragile community and if we don't watch it, uh, it's not going to be demographically uh, representative of what it is now. But it's going to have individuals paying market rent uh, with access to a, a country club. I, but I vote aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. 
The second is an ordinance to rezone properties located at 3321 Kimball Terrace from conditional R13 to conditional R11. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Third is an ordinance to rezone properties located at 600 to, to 614, 601 to 617, and 618 to 776 Wiley Drive from R11 to conditional R11. Dispense with the charter requirements for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. The fourth is an ordinance to rezone properties um, located at 3101, I'm sorry, 3101 to 3163 Kimball Terrace from conditional R13 to conditional R11. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Next is an ordinance to rezone properties located at 3101 to 3163 Kimball Terrace from R11 to OSP Open Space District. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. William? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. And the last is an ordinance granting a special exception to permit the construction of seven or more dwelling units on properties located at 3101 to 3357 Kimball Terrace, 600 to 614 Wiley Drive, and 601 to 741 Wiley Drive. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. William? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Thank you, Breck. C1, please. Uh, the recommendation on C1 is to receive and file. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R1? R1 is an ordinance approving a right of entry agreement with Old Dominion University Real Estate Foundation. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R2? An ordinance approving and accepting the sum of $6,000 from the Virginia Department of Legislative Services Chesapeake Bay Restoration Fund for the implementation of the Bay Star Homes Program. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Excuse Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R3? An ordinance permitting Associated Contracting Services, Inc. to encroach into city property at 623 West Ocean View Avenue with a dock and pier. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? I need to disclose, uh, I talked to Bernard earlier, that uh, Associated Contracting is a client of my firm. Uh, I don't, we don't have anything to do with this piece of property, but we do uh, work with them on, on other properties. And Bernard, do I need to... to no, that, as we discussed, that the uh, uh, details of this permit you um, uh, to vote on it, and I've got the form prepared so that we'll put it in the record so that you, you do not have to abstain. Okay. Aye. Uh, Mr. Frame. Aye. We are R5? R4, Mr. R4, I'm sorry. An ordinance approving the terms and conditions of a water pipeline occupancy permit for the installation of a water pipeline in the railway's right-of-way at Maltby Avenue. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Riddick? Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R5. An ordinance accepting $35,000 in grant funding from an FY14 State Homeland Security Program grant from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security Federal Emergency Management Agency through the Virginia Department of Emergency Management and appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of the $35,000 in grant funding to purchase hazardous materials team equipment for the Department of Fire Rescue. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Cordegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R6. An ordinance accepting an additional $14,677.34 in rescue squad assistance grant funds from the Office of Emergency Medical Services and appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of the grant funds and authorizing the expenditure of additional local matching funds in the amount of $3,669.26 to purchase mobile gateway hotspot routers and other equipment for the Department of Fire Rescue. 
dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R7. A resolution approving the exercise by Norfolk Redevelopment and Housing Authority of powers conferred by the Virginia Housing Authority's Law, Chapter 1, Title 36 of the Code of Virginia, 1950, is amended in conjunction with the issuance of revenue and refunding bonds in the amount of up to $65 million, the proceeds of which will be loaned to Fort Norfolk Retirement Community, Inc., to assist the applicant in refinancing the Harbor's Edge Continuing Care Retirement Community located at 1 Collie Avenue, Norfolk, Virginia, and financing certain capital costs and improvements and upon which the city shall not have any payment obligation. All right, Mr. Hunter's here to answer questions if we have any. All right, thanks, Barry. Okay, call the roll. Adopt the resolution, Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Um, R8? An ordinance to schedule a city council meeting on Tuesday, December 16, 2014, at 7 p.m. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Uh, R9. An ordinance to move the location of the regular weekly city council meeting scheduled for Tuesday, January 13, 2015, at 7 p.m. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Um, I think this is a great idea. this. You're really going to enjoy this. I, th I think we're going to love it. But okay. I was wondering about parking for the people that would come to speak. Has that all been arranged so that when we have citizens that come for, to the meeting? We'll make sure that we take it. And, and that it's advertised? Oh, yes. Okay. Because I want to make sure it's still an open meeting. Sure. It's going to be fun. Aye. Ms. Williams? Lover. Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Um, R10. An ordinance directing the city manager to enter into a refund payment agreement as settlement of a refund of taxes paid yeah. to the city pursuant to section 58.1-1204 of the Code of Virginia 1950 is amended. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Uh, you have an, uh, an add-on, a resolution? Yes, sir. I have one additional item numbered R11, and it is a resolution supporting the governor's commitment that all Virginia public schools be accredited by the end of his administration and requesting the governor and general assembly take action to provide funding and other assistance to divisions with unaccredited schools so as to achieve that goal. Adopt the resolution, Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. That's all I have, Mr. Okay, that concludes the formal portion of tonight's agenda. Three